between the Tesla bot and Tesla maybe going into electricity in Texas, there's a lot to cover with this stock. So joining me today is Tesla Daily host, Rob Maurer. Rob, I wanna start by just looking at Tesla's stock overall. I think we're up about 55% on the past year. What do you make of this past year? Yeah, it's been a wild 18 months for Tesla. Obviously we saw the huge run in 2020. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit year to date, but. Yeah, over the last 12 months, I think, as you said, up roughly 50%. Uh, it's turned positive here over the last month or so uh, on the year. So it seems like Tesla, even after that huge run, is showing some some pretty good, um, you know, ability to to stay in these levels. Uh, and I'm excited for for what the rest of the year has to uh, hold for us with Q3 and Q4. So am I. I mean, it's it's really interesting right now because I feel like we're kind of in the space where we can kind of theorize what's going to happen now that we've got GM, Ford entering the um, electric vehicle space. And, and obviously, as climate change goes on, more and more companies are trying to make sure that their cars are sustainable and perhaps go, switching away from oil and gas. With that being said, it leads me to the question of, do you think that maybe a year, maybe up to five years, this could be a concern for Tesla to have this much competition in the market? No, I don't think so. Um, if you look at you know, what the current administration, U.S. government, um, has worked on with the legacy automakers, so with input from GM, Ford, Fiat Chrysler, et cetera, um, the target that they have put out there for 2030 is for these automakers to be at 40 to 50% electric vehicles in terms of uh, their percent of sales. And that includes, unfortunately, plug-in hybrids, which, you know, that's quite a long ways from actually being a sustainable solution. Um, so at that 40 to 50% level, basically a decade from now, uh, that's, that's really not going to be enough to damper Tesla's ambitious um, target of capturing like 20% of the market. So there's plenty of room for for all these players to make EVs. The, the problem right now is that there's just not enough of them. Um, and we see pretty strong evidence of that with Tesla's demand and their wait times right now um, in North America being multiple months uh, just for pretty much any vehicle they're making. Well, and it's interesting, too, because you have to wonder how much um, Tesla's fan base truly is there to support them as well. I do feel like it's it's a little bit different because you like, for example, I'm a Subaru owner, but I'm never going to be as involved with Subaru as some people are with Tesla. You know, you meet these people who just they love the brand. They love the car. They love the CEO. And they're here for management. Yeah, Tesla's done a great job of kind of cultivating, um, you know, a lot of really loyal customers, uh, a lot of people that are fanatics of the company, to be honest. And um, yeah, I think that is definitely an advantage for Tesla. Tesla doesn't spend any money on advertising. Um, more evidence of, you know, demand being very solid and robust. So yeah, I think that's that's something that can sustain for Tesla. I think Tesla has shown the world that they're taking a very different path from uh, what the auto industry has had for you know multiple decades in a row now. So I think that's really helped cultivate things. And then, of course, you got Elon at the top uh, pushing his memes and things like that, just doing things a little bit differently than you might see from a legacy automaker CEO. Well, and when it comes to kind of carving your own path, there are thing, negative things that come with that. For example, Tesla's autopilot system is, is being investigated by um, the government right now, which the coverage of this is interesting because I'm curious and I want to get your take here. A lot of the Tesla fan base, for example, criticizes mainstream media saying that they cover Tesla's car crashes when it comes to like autopilot mode or self-driving mode uh, more harshly than they do with uh, Ford, GM, like any other legacy car maker. Do you agree with that? I do agree with it. And I think part of that is just because Tesla in general gets more attention negative headlines in general get more attention. So you've got kind of this combination of factors there that's creating a strong incentive system for uh, mainstream media to cover Tesla and cover them in a negative way. That's just naturally what's going to drive more clicks than, you know, writing an article about GM Super Cruise or Ford's um, Blue Cruise. So the other part of it, just in terms of like the, the NHTSA investigation. So Yes, NHTSA is investigating autopilot. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like we have to wait until there's a conclusion to an investigation that could be many months from now. Um, it's a preliminary evaluation stage right now. At any given time, NHTSA is doing about 30 of those. Um, 
So, you know, a lot of people have heard about this Tesla investigation. Probably no one could name a single of the other 29 investigations that are ongoing right now. So um, I do think there's there's definitely a double standard, but there are incentive, incentive structures in place that kind of drive that double standard. I wouldn't say it, it's not necessarily entirely on the media. It's also on the people kind of giving that attention to the media, too, and, and driving that, um, making that a successful business. So as I briefly mentioned at the top, we're seeing Tesla kind of go into different spaces. They're not just going to be a car maker. And perhaps that speaks to um, their ability to kind of stay in front of the pack uh, in the coming years. But with something like the Tesla bot, the, there's been a lot of skepticism about whether or not it can actually be rolled out within the next a year and a half, for example. Do you think that people should be skeptical of the rollout here? And, and just overall, I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on the Tesla bot. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not really an expected unveiling there at AI Day for for Tesla to roll that thing out, or I guess walk it out. But um, I would say a couple of thoughts. So first of all, Elon said at AI Day that they would be looking to do a prototype next year. So for Tesla, you know, Elon has made this abundantly clear. If you ever listen to an earnings call, he spends about 10 minutes on this on every earnings call that um, prototypes are easy, production is hard. Uh, and that's going to apply with the Tesla bot too. So Tesla's going to be able to make a prototype, I'm sure, within the next 18 months or so. But um, for this thing to go into production, it's it's still a really long path. I think Tesla's talking about it now at this stage just because, you know, AI Day, Tesla set it up as, hey, this is a recruiting event. We're trying to find talent to work on these projects. Um, and if Tesla doesn't put these projects out in the open, share their ambitions, it's difficult to get the talent, you know, in robotics, let's say, to be interested in joining a company like Tesla, you know, primarily a car company at this point, um, those people just may not even know that Tesla's working on things that that they have interests in. Uh, so for Tesla to actually be active in recruiting in that field, you know, they need to kind of be a little bit more public about these projects, even if they are quite long term in nature. Which I do think the Tesla bot is, um, you know, a very long term ambitious project. Uh, Elon is just really putting the vision out there for what they think they should be able to achieve based on the things that they are developing today, uh, which is obviously vision perception um, for the autonomy suite uh, that Tesla's shipping in their cars today. So it's a long-term project. Obviously, it's super exciting. The, you know This is a huge total addressable market. It's basically all of human labor. I've seen some of the criticisms be, you know, okay, this is, why are you gonna make a robot in a human form factor? You should make it more specialized or give it things that humans don't have or things like that. And you know, Tesla's certainly going to be open to that as they work on the development here, but uh, it needs to be recognized that this is attempting to be a very general purpose solution. All the infrastructure in the world has been built around humans, designed for humans. You can't make specialized robots for every single individual use case. Uh, it's just not affordable. So the point of the Tesla bot is to be a general purpose thing that, you know, can be flexible like a human, maybe not as much, but in certain circumstances have that flexibility uh, to work on a variety of different things and, and keep those costs low for a general purpose solution. One thing that strikes me is that it's interesting to see Tesla kind of leave just cars behind and, and dive into different sections of various markets. But it also makes me wonder just how feasible this is long term. Like, for example, with the solar roof, you know, maybe maybe we haven't quite seen Tesla's solar roof hit its time yet. Um, but it makes me wonder if you're going in robotics directions and cars and solar roofs, like where, how do these things all kind of intertwine or maybe it's a good thing that they don't. Yeah, I think there's definitely, you know, it definitely diversifies the business for sure. Um, but again, I think on the, on the Tesla bot specifically, what Tesla's sitting there and thinking about is, okay, we've got specialization in batteries. We've got specialization in power electronics and motors. Um, and now we're building up specialization in what Elon calls real world AI. So um, the ability to perceive the world through a camera based vision system um, and basically applying that to their cars. So, you know, they view the the car as the body, the vision system as the brain. And, you know, you sit there and you think, okay, well, if we are developing all this technology, why are we going to limit that specifically to a vehicle like a car when we could also add it to, you know, another type of vehicle, which is just a different form factor um, here with the Tesla bot that could be used for a lot of different other things. When you think about it that way, it actually does seem like a very natural progression, um, almost seems kind of obvious in, in hindsight. So 
I think it totally makes sense. Um, but the the point about the solar roof is a great one. You know, we have seen Tesla diversify into other projects in the past in the past that are seemingly a little bit more tangential, and um, they've had a lot of success in the energy storage business. And solar, it's been a little bit you know more of a mediocre performance, but still a lot of potential for for the future there. And you know, personally, as a Tesla investor, I'm not super concerned with with how the business is developing at this exact moment, but more concerned with how the overall macro trends are going to play out. And I believe that that is definitely heading towards, you know, renewable energy, electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, uh, and Tesla is doing their best to lead in those categories, which are obviously huge addressable markets, throwing the Tesla bot in there, you know, <laughs> you've got automotive energy and then labor, you know, you can't get bigger addressable markets than that. So. Tesla doesn't need to be perfectly successful in every single of these areas. I think Tesla is very well positioned to be successful in them. But um, yeah, kind of the more projects, the better for me. You know, Tesla showed a great ability to continue to execute um, in their core business of auto while still working on these other projects. So yeah, I'm I'm personally pleased to see Tesla having that size of ambition. Well, and their ambition is leading them also, it looks like, to pursue electricity in Texas, which, as we all know, has struggled with the winter storm that they saw um, just a couple months ago. So I'm wondering if how this ties into the business model that we're seeing. And perhaps that that's a good um, case to make about the solar roof. Yeah, I think a lot of people had that same question of uh, how exactly this, this energy business shapes up. Um, Energy business is definitely not my area of expertise, so I don't know a ton about how, you know, it's a very complicated business. Every locality has its own sort of set of regulations on buying and selling power. So uh, what Tesla's doing in Texas is applying for a license to be able to do that. What they do if they get that license remains to be seen, but my, I would imagine that they would, um, you know, be storing energy in their power walls, be selling that back um, to other customers. Exactly how that would come to be, TBD. Um, but obviously, it's it's a pretty big market um, for Tesla to be looking at, interested in, uh, trying to assist with as best they can. When you look at Tesla as an investor, what part of it, and it can be anything from management to any of the different sectors that we just discussed, what, what part of Tesla gets you the most excited going into the next year? I think probably my consistent answer with this would be the pace of innovation, you know, Elon has said that that's going to be Tesla's competitive advantage. Um, it's just that pace of innovation. So I think the Tesla bot is kind of a great example of that. You know, if you compare the projects that Tesla is working on and thinking about versus a company like GM or Ford, obviously the level of ambition, this, the pace of which they're trying to um, achieve some of these different things is very different. And as each individual year goes by, I just think that becomes more and more clear. Um, as we look over the next year, Tesla is going to be ramping up factories in Texas, uh, in Berlin, continue to ramp up in Shanghai. Uh, they should bring capacity for two million, two million plus vehicles per year, uh, online here in the next probably 18 months in addition to what they already have. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very exciting time. Tesla's moving from being this pretty small scale player to over the course of a couple of years being, you know, really one of the largest automakers in the world. Uh, and rapidly continuing to ascend. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for them to continue to make progress on autonomy. We've seen Tesla roll out the FSD, uh, so-called FSD beta, which is doing, you know, city street driving with uh, the capability of basically achieving everything, not with the level of, um, not with the level that is capable of not having interventions on every single drive, but in some cases being able to do that and uh, hopefully once that foundation is in place, it's really just about, you know, collecting the data, continuing to refine the, the neural networks, the algorithms uh, to get Tesla to a place where those interventions continue to come down. And slowly over time, uh, the interventions become so little that Tesla could operate, you know, a robo taxi network. And I think that's the that's the thing that's always been kind of like the, the end state holy, holy grail for Tesla. Uh, now that's still there, but then you've got the Tesla bot kind of as that even next level. So. Uh, yeah, lots lots to be excited about. And of course, I have to pair it with what concerns you the most about Tesla? <laughs> oh, yeah, I get that question a lot, uh, just in terms of risks for the company. I think um, it's a bad answer. I don't I don't think there are any huge risks right now. I think Tesla's 
very well positioned. They're executing very well. Huge order backlog. Um, I think it's it's really just about execution. Tesla needs to execute. Uh, they need to ramp these factories up in in Berlin and Texas, uh, and they need to get 4680 battery production up and going. So that's that's kind of the big project that Tesla's been working on for the last couple of years, uh, and it's a it's an undertaking to say the least. It requires a lot of engineering effort from from all of Tesla's team. So I know they're working super hard on that. Um, that's that's a risk until they're able to achieve it. I'm confident they'll they'll be able to achieve volume production of of those 4680 battery cells uh, that they walked through at Battery Day last year. Um, and then aside from that, I think just the obvious risk that's always a concern for me is uh, Elon and just you know um, he's an integral part of the organization, obviously driving force behind uh, that that pace of innovation that I mentioned before. I think so. Uh, if anything happened to him, that would obviously be be a terrible thing for the company. So. I do think they're at the point now where, you know, I think AI Day kind of demonstrated this. They had a bunch of different leaders come on stage and walk through their individual disciplines. Uh, it wasn't just kind of the Elon show like we have seen at some presentations in the past. So I think Tesla's got a group of really great leaders that are ready to, you know, step up if need be. Um, and in many cases are already doing that, uh, but certainly still key man risk with with Elon. It seems like more and more, maybe it's just as time goes on, um, because I remember the kind of reactions that we used to get, what, three or four years ago when Elon would be on one of those in, in the um, analyst calls and he'd kind of have an Elon moment as we used to refer to it as. Now he's gotten less and less like that and is stepping away from these calls. So it seems like people are more and more digesting that he is the face of innovation at Tesla, as you've noted. He's also the CEO and he is the, he leads Tesla in a way that allows this company to succeed, um, whether you agree with him or you don't. So I'm wondering if you think that everything that we've seen with his um, Dogecoin, Bitcoin, if any of these are distractions anymore, or if people can kind of digest that this is Elon, he's going to do things that he wants to do, and you have to just focus on Tesla stock. Yeah, I mean, I would like to say that... Um people are starting to understand Elon a little bit better and understand that just because he's tweeting about something doesn't necessarily mean it's occupying uh, a huge chunk of his time. I think people that have followed Tesla closely have understood that for many years now, but certainly it's been portrayed differently in, in the media. So yeah, I hope I hope that people are, are starting to understand that a little bit more, see how Elon works now that you know he's gotten quite a bit more popular and um, just has received obviously so much coverage. So hopefully people are figuring that out. Um, and yeah, just focusing on on what Tesla's doing fundamentally as a business, um, and kind of the point about Elon stepping down on on the earnings calls. I think that's you know goes in hand in hand with these other leaders stepping up. You know, I think Elon's realizing that okay, Tesla's at a point right now where the the fundamental business is extremely solid. Um, I think Elon felt like he he needed to be involved in those things up until this point. Uh, but you know, Tesla's financials right now are undeniably very strong. They currently might not justify the the market cap that they have, but it's a strong business. Um, there's there's not really any de denying that anymore, uh, where in the past you could definitely make make those arguments. So um, yeah, I think people are hopefully learning that, you know, that's just part of what, what comes with Elon, um, but it doesn't necessarily reflect on, on Tesla's business. I actually really like that take um, because I feel like when Elon first announced he was going to be stepping away. A lot of people were saying, oh, well, this is because, you know, he doesn't have to be investigated by the SEC if he says something wrong. And it kind of, you know, just it keeps the distractions away from those calls. But what you just said about having the management structure there, I, I feel like just as a journalist who's been covering Tesla, it, it does feel different now. It does feel like he's got a strong group that can support Tesla um, if Elon needs to be focused on something else like if he wants to focus just on the tesla bot the car um company the solar roof part of the company they can all be covered yeah i definitely you know find that to be the case um which is great to see it's obviously the the key man risk for tesla has been huge over the years um elon's always had spacex you know they're side by side with tesla uh, and there's always been questions about okay you know if, if elon had to pick one would he pick tesla or would he pick spacex definitely a valid question to ask so um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's good to see to see this happening. I think the the next interesting point for Elon is going to be uh, when he hits all the tranches of his next CEO compensation or the current CEO compensation plan, which should happen sometime next year. 
So when that happens, um, it's going to be really interesting to see, okay, is that kind of a natural progression for Elon to take a little bit more of a diminished role uh, within Tesla? I'm sure he'll still be involved, but um, maybe he steps down to be, you know, like the, the chief product um, officer or something like that. He's expressed interest in that in the past um, and has just said that there's there's not someone there that he thinks could actually step up and be the CEO um, at that point. So it's going to be interesting next year to see <clears throat> if if something like that does happen or if they kind of just go all in and give Elon a third compensation plan that's set up similarly to continue to, you know, grow, grow Tesla to multiples of where it's at right now. Um, and I think one of the exciting things about AI day is that it seems like there's, you know, between autonomy in, um, cars and then with the Tesla bot, like there's so much room to run as we just talked about with the, with the total addressable market that, um, I think it, it makes it more likely that we'll see another compensation plan for Elon with that sort of similar structure, uh, to keep him involved for, you know, heavily involved for many more years with Tesla. So yeah, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting year next year to, to get some, um, you know, more of a conclusive answer on that. So as we finish up this year, I'm curious what you think could be a major catalyst for the stock. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited about Q3. Um, Q3 tends to be a strong quarter for Tesla. I think last quarter we saw just the incredible operating leverage and gross margins that Tesla is generating. Uh, and I expect that to continue to, you know, be demonstrated in Q3. Obviously, everyone's very focused on chip shortages, part shortages that are impacting the global automotive market. Um, that's that's hurting everybody, but I think Tesla is relatively well positioned to be able to work through those things. Uh, and they're setting up really strong, I think, for a really, really great Q3. Um, and then as we head into Q4, we should start seeing some production, hopefully from Texas and uh, maybe Berlin as well, which is going to be really the next chapter for for Tesla's automotive business. So one question I've always wanted to ask you, Rob, but I always feel like we, we're covering the news and so I, it kind of gets sidelined, but I've always yeah, wanted it. to ask you, yeah, what are your thoughts on Kathy Wood and her belief in Tesla? Yeah, Kathy's, Kathy's great. She, you know, Ark, the whole team was very ahead of the story with Tesla. Um, they've been beating the bull drum for many years now um, and obviously wisely doing that, uh, heavily invested in, in the company very early. So uh, yeah, congrats to them for, for all their success. They've, they've done a great job. Um, you know, I don't, I don't follow many of the stocks that, uh, the ARC team covers all that closely. Um, but I know they're, you know, big believers in growth. I think Kathy lays out a lot of great fundamental reasons for that. Um, and in general, I would say my investment philosophy is, is relatively well aligned with them. So, and you know, the overlap with Tesla, probably no surprise on that. So yeah, they, the, the whole ARC team does a great job. I think they're, you know, showing a different model. For, for Wall Street that is very interesting. So you've gotten shout outs from Elon before. If you could sit down with him, what would be the first question you'd ask? Yeah, I don't know if I've gotten shout outs before. I've, I've gotten the opportunity to ask him questions, I would say. <laughs> he, do, he doesn't seem to have huge awareness of Tesla daily, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully that'll change at some point. Um, but somebody did ask, not me, but somebody on the last earnings call did ask if you know he'd consider a, an interview with, with Tesla daily and um, one other channel. So hopefully that'll happen. He said, you know, kind of, he would, he'd think about it, but if he's doing an interview, it's, it's taking away time from something else. So, um, obviously don't want to put Elon in the position of forcing him to, to have to do that. But, um, yeah, certainly I'd love the opportunity to ask him questions. We get a little bit of that through those earnings calls, um, through that say.com process. So, uh, unfortunately with Elon dropping off the calls, that's not going to be as big of an opportunity, uh, directly for Elon anymore, but, um, hopefully at some point an interview would happen. And yeah, I've got a, I've got a ton of questions for him if it does. So what would be your first question though? I'm curious. I want to, I... you know, the space. I can't so give well. him away, Catherine. I can't ah, give him away. <laughs> dang it. I was hoping. It's a teaser. It's a teaser for <laughs> if it does happen. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. Cause I would love to see you and Elon sitting side by side. It would be fun. Rob, thank you for joining us today. I, I do. I just want to end by asking you, is there anything that, I've missed that you want to cover. I love that question. I ask that question a lot myself. Um, it's a difficult one to answer. I think we've covered a lot of, you know, what I'm excited about. Um, I think I'd probably just like make one more point on competition. Like this has been a theme since the very beginning for Tesla of like, okay, 
this is the year that competition's finally happening. Like 2017, the, the Chevy Volt Motor Trend Car of the Year might have been 2018 or whatever. Um, you know, is this finally going to be the Tesla killer? And, you know, fast forward a couple of years and now GM ends up recalling all every single bolt that's ever been produced. Like it's this story takes time to to play out. But like the trajectory has been clear and continues to be clear of Tesla being the leader. Um, so I, I don't see any change to that. I, I still think legacy automakers are moving extremely slow. Like the market is wide open for Tesla to just continue growing as fast as they can. Uh, and that's what they're going to do. And people that are, you know, not really willing to give credit to Tesla for that leadership position are just going to continue to be, you know, surprised and um, continue to wonder like what's going on with competition and, and why it's not here and why it's not, why it's not affecting Tesla. So, you know, I am excited for some of these, these pure EV plays, um, not from an investment perspective necessarily, but I'm excited to see uh, what companies like Lucid, Rivian, um, and then obviously a lot of action in China too with with Neo and Xpeng. I'm excited to see uh, where these companies can take it. They're more the competition to watch than you know what we're seeing from from the legacy automakers at this point. Well, I think that what you just said kind of feeds into, for example, they are a bit of apples and oranges, but Reed Hastings of Netflix saying that he's not worried about streaming wars because innovation is innovation. And it does feel like Elon Musk is taking that kind of approach to EV plays coming into Tesla space. Yeah, and the EV market compared to like the streaming market is, you know, um, like a decade behind. I don't know. <laughs> We're in the EV market right now. It's it's extremely small market share. Um, you know, I think about like three percent in the United States. So, you know, people look and they see Tesla delivering five hundred thousand a million vehicles in a year, and it sounds like a lot. But you have to consider the automotive market is somewhere around eighty million vehicles per year. So, um, yeah, it's there's so much ground left to cover and people i think just don't really have a good understanding of of how big these numbers are and how much space um is up for grabs all right rob thank you for joining us today and hopefully we'll be back talking to each other around the third quarter because i'm curious to see how that plays out for tesla yeah absolutely i'm definitely excited for it so uh, i'd love to chat again then